have the spinning wheel. Same here, technical issues. Somebody is recording. Oh, somebody is recording. Okay, just give me a second uh, while we resolve this issue. Okay, it appears to be working now. I'm good on my end. All righty, so good problem. morning. And welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Housing and Buildings. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent mode. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.myc.gov. Once again, that's testimony at council.myc.gov. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Am I muted? You get to go, Chair. I'm ready to go. Yes. Good morning. Today, the committee will be hearing a bill related to booking service reports on short term housing rental transactions. Local Law 146 of 2018 requires short term rental platforms that provide booking services to report certain information about their transactions to the Office of Special Enforcement. Shortly after this law was enacted, rental platforms Airbnb and HomeAway filed lawsuits challenging it. On June 12th, a settlement was reached between Airbnb and the city, the terms of which include amendments to Local Law 146. This pre-considered intro sponsored by Council Member Rivera would provide the amendments to Local Law 146 outlined in the settlement agreement with Airbnb, including redefining the scope and frequency of the information reported. This will in turn assist the Office of Special Enforcement in its efforts to enforce laws related to short-term housing rental. We expect to hear testimony from the Office of Special Enforcement, as well as any interested members of the public. Um, I believe that we'll hear an opening statement from the bill's sponsor, Carlina Rivera. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Carnegie, for giving me the opportunity to speak on my pre-considered legislation we are hearing today, which will make amendments to Local Law 146 of 2018. These amendments, which will fulfill the terms of a settlement reached between the City of New York and Airbnb, will finally implement the legal framework behind my 2018 bill requiring short-term rental platforms to share information about their listings. With my legislation, the city will finally be provided with the information necessary to fairly and effectively crack down on countless illegal hotel operators that have kept thousands of apartments off of the market and out of the hands of families desperate for affordable homes. As a former housing activist who saw firsthand how illegal short-term rentals block New Yorkers from access to safe, affordable homes, I know this law, the strongest of its kind in the nation, will make a big difference in the lives of many of my former clients at good old Lower East Side and in other neighborhoods across the city. I wanna thank the city law department, the Office of Special Enforcement, our council legal team and my staff for their tireless work during the nearly two years we spent working to defend this important and historic housing law. I look forward to seeing my amended bill, one of my first ever passed in the council, finally go into effect. Thank you. Uh, according to what I can see on my screen, we've been joined by council member Cabrera, council member Chin, council, council member Gredenchik, and obviously council member Rivera. Oh, I see council member Lewis as well. Uh, 
Um, so are we ready to move to our first, to our testimony? Uh, sure. So I'm uh, Audrey Sun. I'm committee to the uh, council to the city council's committee on housing and buildings. Before we, uh, that you will on a few housekeeping matters, I want to testify at which point you will be unmuted by the host. Uh, I will call on panelists to testify. Please listen for your name to be called as I will periodically announce to who announce who the next panelists will be. We will hear testimony from the administration first, followed by any testimony from the public. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask a question, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you in order. We will be limiting council member questions to five minutes, including responses. Um, I will now call on the administration to testify. We will be hearing testimony from Christian Klosner, Executive Director of the Office of Special Enforcement. I will now de deliver the oath to the administration. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do. Thank you. You may begin your testimony. Uh, wait, uh, before you begin, I just want to um, acknowledge that we also have been joined by council member Perkins. Thank you, sorry. Good morning, Chairperson Cornegy and members of the Committee on Housing and Buildings. My name is Christian Klosner, and I am the Executive Director of the Office of Special Enforcement, which is overseen by the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. OSC's mandate, originating from a mayoral executive order in 2006, is to coordinate efforts across city agencies to problem solve around emerging issues adversely affecting neighborhood cohesion, livability, and safety. OSC has served this function in numerous issue areas, ranging from longstanding involvement in illegal massage parlors and dangerous clubs to newer work streams required by the pandemic, in particular, safeguarding restaurants from exorbitant fees charged by third party delivery apps and ensuring businesses and residents are in compliance with health guidelines put in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The vast majority of OSC's work, however, since 2015, has related to addressing illegal short-term rentals occurring in the city's permanent residential housing stock. By working to stop the proliferation of these illegal short-term rentals, OSC's enforcement efforts advance key goals of this administration, to help preserve affordability and community livability, to prevent harassment and displacement of permanent residents, and to increase access to permanent housing. Our enforcement efforts protect residents and visitors to New York City from dangerous violations of the city's building and fire safety standards, while striving to ensure that New Yorkers are not disturbed by illegal commercial activity in their residential neighborhoods and buildings. The problem of illegal short-term rentals in New York City adds to the variety of long-standing affordability issues that this administration is committed to addressing. The illegal short-term rental problem is not homogenous, but rather looks different across neighborhoods. In one neighborhood, this can mean an entire rent stabilized building is converted to an illegal hotel. In another neighborhood, a two family house might be converted into an illegal hostel with 21 rooms and 62 beds. Both of these examples are real uh, things that we have found in our enforcement. Effective enforcement requires tactics calibrated for these citywide differences, but it has become increasingly clear that a critical component across all enforcement has been the ability to gain access to data about the listings and hosts that only the companies that facilitate short-term rental transactions have possession of. When OSC last appeared before this body, it was in support of a law that required these online services to provide this critical data to the city. That law passed, becoming Local Law 146 of 2018. It required that such booking services provide monthly reports to the city of all short-term rental transactions, with the exception of those occurring in buildings authorized by the Department of Buildings to house transient use. As mentioned before, that law faced a legal challenge from two booking services that would have been subject to the requirement, namely Airbnb and HomeAway. A preliminary injunction was issued in that matter. Now, OSC appears before this body again, this time in support of updated legislation the passage of which will result in Airbnb dismissing its suit while still providing a powerful tool to further the city's efforts to address short-term rentals. 
Attached to the submitted written version of this testimony is the actual settlement agreement by which the city and Airbnb agreed to conclude the dispute over local law 146 through the enactment of the pre-considered legislation that is the subject of this hearing. Under this updated local law, short-term rental platforms would share information with the city on a quarterly basis instead of monthly. Instead of all transactions for all listings, the report would include all transactions for listings that generate five or more nights of bookings per quarter, so long as the listing offers or appears to offer an entire housing unit or allows three or more guests to stay at one time. For all eligible listings, reports provided to the city would be required to include the physical address of the listing, host information such as name, physical address, phone number, and email address, the name, number, and URL of the listing, whether the short-term rental is for an entire unit or part of a unit, the total number of days booked, and the amount received by the host for each transaction, as well as the account name and an anonymized, <laughs> anonymized account identifier relating to those payments. The data this amended law will provide will significantly enhance OSC's ability to enforce short-term rental restrictions and deter unlawful rentals. It is critical to note that this amended law does not in any way change what is or is not legal in New York City. Indeed, the legal framework for short-term rentals is reflected in the legislation's terms. The current laws in New York City restrict rentals for fewer than 30 days to only those situations where up to two guests are maintaining a common household with a permanent occupant of a housing unit whether it's in a multiple dwelling or in a one or two family building. In addition, where the unit being listed is in a multiple dwelling, the listing itself may run afoul of the law prohibiting illegal advertisements. The fact that certain transactions for certain listings will not be reported does not mean that those transactions or listings are therefore legal. While listings offering only a part of a unit with two or fewer guests allowed may be legal, OSC has repeatedly encountered and will remain vigilant to those hosts who attempt to evade scrutiny by dividing whole apartments or buildings into a series of private listings. These kinds of arrangements not only can result in the removal of one or more units of housing, they can create egregious safety conditions for the occupants. OSC will apply traditional methods of enforcement to address this subsection of the illegal short-term rental market. In addition, the little guy exception for listings that are rented for fewer than five nights per quarter does not mean those users will never receive an inspection or violation. Instead, this little guy exception to reporting means that the city is keeping to its stated intention not to proactively focus its efforts on those who infrequently rent out the unit of housing they live in. If the low level use results in disruptions to the community sufficient to prompt a complaint, OSC will still respond and take appropriate action. In conclusion, this revision to Local Law 146 will still provide the city with a majority of the data needed to effectively address illegal short-term rentals, while at the same time also resolving several of the concerns raised during the litigation and in the preliminary injunction decision. The Office of Special Enforcement commends the Council for its swift action to realize the terms of the settlement by introducing the legislation that will end Airbnb's lawsuit against the city and urges its rapid passage. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your testimony um, and for our close working together on, on these issues. Um, I'm going to now call on council members to ask questions in the order that they have used, that they have raised, used the raise hand function. Council members, please keep your questions in five minutes, including responses to Sergeant at Arms. We'll keep a timer and let you know when your time is up. I will then come back and ask, share questions um, after I've allowed my colleagues to ask questions. No question? Okay. Um, actually, um, do we want to move directly to, um, since we don't have any questions, I don't have any questions, the, 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 my colleagues don't have any questions, can we move to the next panel? Thank you so much for your testimony. 
Thank you, Chair Carnegie, and thank you to the council members for receiving my testimony. Have a great day. You too. Uh, thank you. I believe we don't have any members of the public that are registered to testify at today's hearing. So Chair Carnegie, I'll, I will just turn it back to you to uh, close the hearing. So again, this has been an issue that has plagued the city. I want to thank my colleagues, in particular Colleen Rivera, for uh, working really hard to make sure that the affordable units are protected and that nobody is left vulnerable, especially um, during this particular time. It would, it would have been a travesty. So timing is everything. I want to thank you so much for um, allowing this to happen. I believe, hold on one second. Did you accidentally call me Helen Rosenthal? <laughs> or do you have a question that before we close you'd like to ask? So um, we are going to commence this hearing. I'm looking for my drumsticks. Oh, here we go. Thank you so much for your participation this morning. Uh, thank you, colleagues. This is unfortunately the only way we get to see each other in this time. So thank you so much for showing up this morning. Uh, hey, Margaret. Hey, Fernando. Uh, thank you so much.